Alright, welcome back to a new touch designer tutorial. And this is gonna be the last one for 2020. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna look at these sort of patterns that you can see here uh, today. And right, so I did this uh, very quickly actually, and it's it's quite a simple technique, and it has a lot of a lot of possibilities. And I'm just gonna show you a few looks you can uh, like create with this. So as you can see here, if I just change this feedback loop that we're using, we can very easily uh, get these very differently looking patterns. So so that's cool. And um, oops. Uh, one thing I want to show you is this, so you can get these like sort of swirls. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot you can do, um, and it looks very like vintage '70s sort of thing, like like that. Um, yeah, cool. So let's just dive right in and um, restart from scratch as usual. So we are going to start with a circle top and we're going to set the circle to like the radius to one and one and then let's change the center to like 0.5 and minus 0.5 on the Y and let's change the border width to like uh, 10 and um, let's go down with the fill alpha and let's change the border color to uh, one. Oh wait, so 10, you also need to change this to pixels and then change it back to 10. Okay, so 10, 10 pixel wide. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, uh, that's it for the circle. And let's just add a feedback here now and a transform. And an add. And um, on this transform, we can now uh, like change this to uh, like the translate to like 0 0.05 and minus 0 0.05. And um, let's just drag this add back onto the feedback. And so there we go, that we already have our sort of like copied circles. And uh, they just sort of seem like they're changing uh, shapes. So we can counter this by also changing the scale. Um, it's a bit of a different look. You can, I'm gonna show you how you can like change the look later here, but that's our basic texture that we're gonna use. So let's add one and two nouns actually. And one we can just call hub or it doesn't really matter. And the other one that's actually important what we name it, I'm gonna name it map, oops, map one. And we wanna create uh, four maps for now. So this one and plus three, and we wanna like rotate them around. So let's just copy this, like add a transform, copy it two times, and change this to 90 degrees, 180 and 270 on the third one. So now we can add, uh, we can just like copy and paste this three times and put these trans transforms in there. So we have our maps nice and set up. Cool, we're gonna get back to this. Um, let's create a grid now because we wanna like uh, position our rectangles so we're gonna put this on uh, inside a grid or like based on a grid. So let's add a null here and let's call this pause. And on the grid, let's make this viewer active, press W. And now we can like change the, I mean, yeah, we can change this anytime, but now we can see, okay, we got nice row of 10 by 10. And so that makes 100 points, which is going to be important in a second. We also want to create uh, a rectangle and uh, add a transform to this. And make this like point uh, 111. So that's, that's the size we're going to use. You're going to see why in a second. And add a geo from here. And I'm also going to need a camera and a constant material and put that on there add a render top an rgb key and from there a null which you're going to call bg as usual and on the renderer let's change the resolution to 1080 by 1080 
pixel format to 32 bit float and the anti alias to like 16 times high. These are all not necessary, I just like to do them recently. Okay, let's turn on the render. I like the display and see uh, our lonely little square there in the background. So let's go to our geo and turn instancing on. Let's just like uh, make these all, like turn the viewer off for all of them. And let's just use our position null here for uh, translation. So yeah, for positioning. <laughs> so on the translate OP, and we can just use now P0 and P1, oops, P1, to position them uh, on the X and Y axis. On the cam, let let us change the uh, translate to, I uh, like to translate Z to 1.4, and then we get this perfectly uh, aligned, um, like with a nice border there. Cool, so if I just make this, uh, you know, a bit smaller, you can better see what we have here. So we just have a grid of rectangles, uh, 10 by 10 rectangles. Um, and we wanna like put all of these maps onto the different rectangles. So let's go back and uh, we wanna have them like, you know, be aligned right next to each other. So let's uh, create a noise. And now it becomes important how many like uh, points we have here. We can, of course, like just use a Python to, to retrieve this data. So we can just type in op, grid one, and then point like dot num points. And uh, now we get 100, which is correct. <laughs> and uh, we can just type in one here for the y. And let's change this pixel format to 32-bit float. And let's change the input smoothness and this viewer smoothness to nearest pixel. If we look here, we now have 100 boxes with different grayscales or different values between 0 and 1. So let's uh, go down with the period to like 0 0.05. And um, let's just add a null from here and call it index. So on our uh, geo, let's go to our instance two page and let's use this instance textures down here to put these textures onto our grids, like onto our rectangles. So we have uh, three like uh, fields here that we need to fill out. So in the first one, we need to define the map that we wanna use, so the operator names. So in our case, they're called map. So let's just say map and then an asterisk. So we're using all the maps, like every map with, you know, every, every uh, operator that's called map and then whatever is after that. So for now, it's only showing the first one though. So we need to change the other two fields. So let's uh, change this to index, which is our operator here. And we also need to define the channel that we wanna use. So let's just use R, so the red channel. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't actually change much yet. We You could also use like the, the G or the B, it doesn't really matter, like it doesn't matter at all for this case because we are monochrome, so all the different color channels are just the same. So what we need to do here, as you can see, we just have like two different values, so to say, like we're just using these two maps. That's because right now we have a value here between zero and one. And we need a value between zero and three. So zero, one, two, three. Um, so basically, basically we need four different digits. So because we have four different maps. So we can use a math here and go to a range and change this to three. And there you go. Now you have all our now we have all our uh, maps sort of, yeah, in, on our grid. So this is the, the basic technique. Um, let's add some color now. So that we can just uh, copy and paste this noise. Let's call the first one positioning. Oops, god damn. Let's call the second one um, coloring. And let's also, I don't know, and it's called as call. We might want to give this some colors. 
uh, with by pressing C. And so on the geo we can now use our call on to on here. And let's go to our coloring actually and change the monochrome to like off and the period to like 1.5. So it sort of looks like this. And we might want to change the seed. And let's go to Geo Instance 2 page. And uh, yeah, we, we want to have this call here. And now we can just select R, G, B. And now we have color. <laughs> it's that, that simple. Um, I, I usually want to like go down with our, my amplitude a bit <clears throat> here. So we don't have that intense color. And you can now overdrive this color here a bit to make this brighter. So like something like that maybe. And um, yeah, you can now go through the different seeds to get different color schemes. You can also go higher with the with the period, so you just get like fewer colors, basically. So that looks pretty cool. And yeah, as I said, yeah, you have a lot of options because we have like a feedback loop, and feedback loops are always fun. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the different options. You can just translate like one of them. You can translate both of them. Uh, to like different values and uh, you're gonna get this sort of tree looking like shape you can uh, turn the scale like off just sort of you know just leave the scale as it is and also that really like that um, you can technically make it bigger it doesn't actually look that good uh, or even smaller you can um, change the pivot for example to like a 0.6 here and then add some rotation and that's gonna do this sort of Oh, that's that's really interesting. <laughs> so now you get these moving balls, um, like yeah, spheres almost. So you might want to go down with the scale, and then you get this sort of fractal-like looking shape, which I really like as well. So yeah, you have a lot of options here to um, to play around with all these shapes, and because they're like sort of uh, matching, it looks uh, like really interesting. Unfortunately, like they don't completely match here, but uh, maybe you find a way around that actually. So you might wanna. You probably like it also changes stuff um, if you if you use uh, different transform orders. So play around with that as well. Oops. So uh, no, it doesn't. Well, just just feel free to to play as usual. Um, two things I want to uh, show you now. Let's add a, uh, let's copy this and let's add a level, no, from, a level from, from here, for example. Let's add an over from here. Let's actually change this. And uh, we can well, let's see. Uh, let's add a null and call this map five. So you, you can't really see that well, right? So I'm going to turn this off for a second. So I'm using, I'm adding just another like transform here. Um, or you could, you know, you could just use that. Actually, it's simpler. Um, so we're using this, this map and combining it with the other one. That's really all we're doing. And so now if we go to our math, turn this back on uh, and change this to four, we now also get these uh, over overlaying ones. So let's actually go back and make this like smaller so we can see this nicely. And, and you could just repeat this process. Again, you can't see. <laughs> well, you can just copy and paste this, uh, maybe use this one and then use like, I don't know, first one. And I just added the level here, so you might wanna go down with the opacity for the lower one. Could, could, that could be interesting. So something like this, and then you again need to go to the map and change this to something higher, because now we have six maps. And then if we turn this on again, you can see we have these sort of, uh, uh, lower opet like you know they seem to be more in the background so, so that's what i mean and uh what you can also do you can go uh, too high with this number and then you're also going to get some black boxes if that's something that you're that you're interested in 
You can also go to your noise here and change the um, period to something higher. Uh, that's also super cool, I think. Uh, you can change the exponent um, and anything, you know, you know, the, you know the drill with noise. Same with the coloring, of course, you can make this really small and give like every sort of spiral or whatever this is, uh, like it's not really a spiral. <laughs> uh, every texture, like its own color. Um, yeah, whatever you feel like, you can have this black and white, of course. Um, and you can also go to the grid and change this to like more, more colors. Then you also need to change the uniform scale of the rectangles though. So it's just like a, yeah, a smaller grid. So um, one last thing, <laughs> because it's nice to add noise, like grain, you can add some grain, just change it to random, go down with these values a bit. And uh, that's really all you need to do. And now you have a bit of grain, something like this. So that's, that's cool. You're not gonna see it well in the video, but you're gonna see it on your project. Uh, it's gonna make this look even cooler. All right, so um, of course this doesn't have to be this texture. You can use any sort of texture, especially ones that sort of align, maybe better than mine <laughs> even. But yeah, it, I really like this look. So, um, Thank you so much for watching and thank, thank you. I just, you know, I'm German. <laughs> uh, thanks for all the uh, support that, that that you gave me over the year. It's really amazing what, like how the self channel uh, exploded uh, in the course, course of the last year. Uh, it's really amazing. And I'm really excited for the next year. And yeah, I'm gonna probably start using Nodge or Unreal Engine and really expand my, my skills and knowledge and connect that to Touch Designer. So uh, next year is definitely gonna be exciting, especially because this is now, like I'm gonna work full time on this now and because I'm done with university, so yeah. And thanks a lot to all the people that are supporting me on Patreon. That really, that's, yeah, it's amazing. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video next year.